BMW's M Locker Operational Principles. The M rear axle differential is a demand controlled rear axle differential lock. It is used during pull away or when there's a difference in wheel speed in the rear axle when the vehicle is driving straight ahead. Dynamic cornering tension, power oversteer such as drifting, stabilization in coast overrun mode. Electronic and computerized control operation. The Dynamic Stability Control Module, Digital Motor Electronics, Integrated Chassis Management, and Front Electronic Module all communicate over the flex ray bus to the regulated rear axle differential lock control unit, which therefore controls the rear axle differential lock mechanism. The Dynamic Stability Control Module is responsible for wheel speed, axle torque set point, stabilization status, and braking value. The Digital Motor Electronics is responsible for accelerator pedal angle, wheel drive torque, and engine running signal. The integrated chassis management is for tolerance adjustments of wheel, meaning adjustment of different wheel speed circumstances, lateral acceleration, yaw rate, driving speed, road latitude tilt, and steering angle. The front electronic module is responsible for terminal status, vehicle identification number, and vehicle condition such as power management and fault memory block. The regulated rear axle differential control unit controls the power and the position of the motor in the differential. The GHAS control module, which is German for Geregelte Hinterachsgetriebe Sperre, translates to Regulated Rear Axle Differential Lock. In order to compensate for wear, a reference run is performed after the engine is shut down. This is performed every 621 miles or after an energy input of 100 kilojoules. There are two Hall effect switches inside the motor to keep track of its position. The system uses three temperature sensors, one in the control unit, one in the electric motor, and one in the oil. The M-Drive differential uses a pulse-modulated electric motor and a ball ramping mechanism to change the function from open differential into limited slip differential and ultimately a full locker. When driving straight, both axles will rotate the same, regardless of the motor position. When presented with a situation where one axle needs to rotate at a different speed, for example, when I hold the right axle stationary, the differential responds as an open differential, allowing the left axle to rotate. Here we can see the clutch discs have free movement between them. This is what allows for the open action. When the motor is activated with a duty cycle controlled current, the reaction plate will rotate. A ball ramping mechanism will force the pressure plate against the clutch discs. The clutch discs are now clamped together, locking the differential. Reducing the current to the motor relaxes the clamping force on the discs. Once again, applying current to the motor has caused the pressure plates to lock the disc together. Reducing the current relaxes the clamping force. From this angle, we can see the gears on the motor and how they interact with the reaction plate. The lines I place on the reaction plate designate various levels of clamping force. When I apply current to the motor to a position past the last white line on the reaction plate, the differential will be in full lock mode. 
I will be unable to hold the right axle stationary. When the motor is adjusted so the third white line on the reaction plate is in alignment with the reference mark on the pressure plate, the locking mechanism will be in a limited slip mode. I won't be able to hold the axle by hand, but with the aid of a wrench, I'm able to hold the right axle with some difficulty. I'm using a fixed frequency pulse width modulator circuit that can adjust the duty cycle with an adjustable potentiometer. If you listen carefully, you can hear the motor buzzing as I adjust the duty cycle. This close-up shows the action of the ball ramping mechanism and the movement of the pressure plate. You can clearly see the gap between the reaction plate and the pressure plate increase and decrease. When a ball rolls up a ramp, it is forced against the pressure plate, causing the two plates to separate in distance. When the balls roll down the ramp, the two plates come closer together. The M differential uses five steel balls that fit into five ramps. There are ramps on both plates. The plates with the motor teeth is the reaction plate, and the other plate is the pressure plate. Twisting the two plates will activate the ramping action. In one direction, the plates separate. In the opposite direction, the plates come closer together. The clutch pack and side gears are integrated into the case. After removing the pressure plate, I can remove the clutch pack and side gear together. I can now remove the side gear from the clutches and place it back into the case with the spider gears. You can now see the splines on the side gear that engage with the clutch discs. The steel discs engage and tab into the case, while the friction discs engage and spline into the side gear. When the clutch pack is completely assembled, it fits back into the case. I'm going to use a foot-pound digital torque wrench to measure the breakaway torque of the axle shaft. First, I'll adjust the current to position number 1. I'll now turn the input drive and we'll see that we get approximately 10 foot-pounds of drag between the clutch discs. Now, adjust to position number 2. I can't even turn the crank, so I'll have to hold the crank and pull on the torque wrench. Here, I will get approximately 22 foot-pounds of resistance in the clutch pack. And finally, I will try position number 4. Now I'll have over 70 foot-pounds of torque. I can't even break it away. This is in a fully locked position. 